So uh, is is Tracy is the mic on? Yeah, click the button. Okay. Yep. Okay. And so just kind of tilt it up so we can we can hear you. Okay. So Tracy, if if we um, recollect, there were um, there were a couple of issues per the building commissioner's June thirteenth letter mm -hmm, yes. uh, that you uh, that you were going to address. Um, and I, I believe the, the the main issue is the dimensions of the of the building. So why don't you tell us now that you've had a chance to digest this letter? Uh, why, don't, why don't you tell us where where you are with, with this? With your Brian. permission, may I have my husband tell you? Because yep, okay, okay, step up to the mic. Yep. And you're you're Gary uh, Gary Lamrell. How you doing? Oh, you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I took all the measurements, and I was we were talking about the same footprint where it was going to go on, and I came up with it's 20 by 16 by 9 foot 8. To the peak of the roof is 16 feet overall height. The overall height of the building is 16 feet to the peak of the roof. Oh, okay, so let me just get those dimensions. So, so, the, so the width of the building is what? 16 feet. 16 feet. 16 feet width, and the length is what? 20 feet. 20 feet. And then, and then to the peak of the roof, it's 16. Yep. The wall, the wall height is nine foot eight. Okay, walls are nine foot nine eight. And ten to the peak of the roof, it's it's 16 feet. Okay. It's at a tippity top. And that and that's going to be pretty much how you're going to. Yep. It's in a same footprint. Everything. Exact the, same footprint. The gutters are going to go on each side of it and drain into the backyard of 94 Westfield Road. And the water will drain. Yep. In, into a, into our backyard. Into, into your backyard. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. What else did we? Uh, what else did we miss here? Did we miss anything? The close to the. We, we mentioned about the garage. But it's no closer to the street, right? No, it's not. It's going to be exactly on the same, same cement slab that it was on. And that was. The materials. Is that something we looked at? That he asked. The materials. Yeah, uh, it's going to be all brand new material. That okay, because I think that was one something they yeah, asked. It's, Basically, it is. It's, it's, be better, will, yeah. will the new garage be constructed of same or generally considered by the average person to be uh, better materials? Will they the same or better be materials? Better, pretty yeah. much. Okay. Be brand better. new. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, the garage is going to be no closer to the street. Better materials. Um, we went over the the visual impact. Uh, we went over rainwater management. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the committee? Okay. Uh, from the public, anybody here want to speak in favor or against, in opposition there too? Uh, hearing none, um, I'll take a motion, mo to, close motion to close the close public hearing. Second. Okay. On the, on the motion to close, close the public hearing, just so you know, we, we cannot long, no longer take any more, more information. Did you have any more closing remarks you want to give? No, I do not. Okay. All right. On, on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, just just have a seat, and we'll, we're gonna we're gonna figure out the the special permit part. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, gentlemen. So um, why don't we say that we'll entertain a motion to grant the special permit with uh, conditions? conditions yeah. Okay. So so okay. Can I just get that? Uh, Make motion to uh, grant the special permit with conditions that we'll be uh, addressing right now. Second. Okay. Okay. On, on, okay. Under discussion. Um, okay. So today's the um, 16th. Special permit granted with conditions. Okay. And the conditions uh, I would suggest would be the um, one, the uh, the building, the garage will be no closer, no closer to the street. Correct. Um, garage will be constructed with better materials. Okay. Okay. There's two. I think it should be similar or better materials. Similar or better materials. All right. Similar or better. Um, the garage will be 
of the same dimensions and those dimensions will be um, uh, 20, 20, 20, 20 by 16 in width 16 I'm oh, sorry 16 feet in width 20 20 feet length I'm sorry 16 feet in length wide long yes yeah, okay okay I'm sorry 16 feet in width width 16 feet if I could read my own writing that'd be helpful 16 feet in, in width 20 feet in length um, the walls are going to be nine. nine by nine foot eight, eight inches peak is 16 feet okay uh, and rainwater management uh, well the water uh, will drain the, towards owner's property yeah. yeah yeah put that down okay okay all right so with those uh, conditions as and you're gonna you're gonna have gutters are gonna effectuate that drainage yes. okay all right okay on the motion with conditions all in favor aye, aye. Opposed? None? Okay. So um, here's how it's going to work is that we will put this on the full City Council's agenda, which will be Tuesday the 21st, and the full City Council will, will, will consider this at that time. I'm confident that the City Council will vote to approve the special permit, and then um, as of the following day or two, Wednesday or Thursday, you can contact the city clerk's office and, and pick up said special permit, okay? And which you will, um, I'm thinking that that's probably gonna be part of your, uh, probably uh, recorded as well, so at the registry of deeds. So that'll, that'll, just, that'll just strengthen the, uh, strengthen your, um, your argument for when, when you go to sell the house, okay? All right, uh, Ms. Bennett, thank you so much. Pat, thank you so much. Uh, Gary, thank you, okay? All right, we're now joined by Councilor McGivern. Um, Councilor, we, we just went ahead with a special permit and we, we, we approved nice. it with, with conditions. Good luck. Thank you. All right. All right, thank you. Have a very good night. All right. Um, moving on to, wow, that was that's efficiency in government right there. Yeah, that was good. All right, so moving on to public hearing number two. Um, if I could just get a motion to open the... Uh, Make a motion to open the public hearing for um, application of Mount Tom Solar, LLC. Second. Okay, all in favor, open public hearing. Aye. Okay, we're public hearing is open. Um, and the crowd is cheering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I told them they were all here for this project. Yeah. Um, Let's see this here. Okay. Where would you like our easel and drawings? Yeah, this is this is for. Uh, oh, there you go, Joe. Oh, if you need that. Thank you. Yeah. So closer to you. Don't yeah, be, maybe closer. Be sure to digest that. Maybe um, closer, right? The easel. Can come in? Sure. Yeah, you can, you can bring it in. Uh, public hearing. It's a special. This is a special <laughs> permit application of Mount Tom Solar LLC to construct a large-scale ground-mounted solar photovoltaic PV facility within the floodplain overlay district at 200 East Hampton Road, map 226, parcel double zero, parcel uh, block double zero, parcel 009. And with us, could we I, have- Can I make a correction? Oh. At this East Hampton, I believe it's Northampton Street, right? Yeah. Oh, it should be Northampton, why am I, yeah, it should be At East Hampton Street, Road in our agenda, Road. but it's Northampton Street North on the Street. book, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Tallman. Yes, sir. All right, um, and with us are, Who's with us here? Time bond? Yep. Okay, so if you would just uh, introduce yourself and we'll proceed accordingly, okay? Sure. My name's Brian E. Angus. I'm with Time Bond. And with me is Brian Huntley, also with Time Bond. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Or I can introduce you. Okay, uh, yeah, you, you, okay, if. It, uh, if I could just get your, 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 your name again. Robert 
I A N I. And your title, sir? All right. Um, okay, so uh, Ryan, that is uh, Robert Maggiani, M A G G I A N I. He's the regional environmental manager. And you, sir? Yes, in your title? <coughs> okay, plant manager of the current site and um, and site manager of what they hope will be the solar site. That's uh, Michael Buckman from NGENGIE. -E. Okay. All righty. So um, if you're going to speak, um, especially you, Brian, you'll need the microphone, okay? Um, I can, I can, I'll, I'll, I'll open and then we can switch positions. Okay, and, and that, that mic can, can, can come off. Okay. Uh, you don't have to have it on the stand. I mean, you can walk around like you're, you know, uh, like you're doing stand up or something. That's what we do here. We do a lot of stand up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of stand up comedy in this, in this little chamber. Okay, so fire away, please. Thank you. Again, my name is Bryony. I'm with Ty and Bond, and we're here to present the Mount Tom Solar Project. Uh, we're before the city council because the project requires a special permit by virtue of the site being in the floodplain overlay district. I'll give the uh, committee a brief overview of the site and proposed project uh, and talk about some of the other local and state approvals it has received to date and then Brian will get into the nitty gritty of the compliance with the special permit criteria for work in the floodplain. So I think uh, everybody knows where we are. This is a, an approximately 54-acre <coughs> parcel south of the uh, Mount Tom plant. It's a separate, it's directly south in it and abutting, uh, but a separate parcel. Thank you. Uh, it's what, uh, the, the project is proposed in the area that is existing agricultural fields. So until um, last year, I believe, NG had a lease with a farmer, uh, so those fields were in active agricultural use. The, uh, as the committee is aware, this site was the focus of a City of Holyoke and state-funded reuse study for reuse alternatives after decommissioning of the plant. Renewable energy was a big focus of that study, and NG is now moving forward with the project at the site in line with the recommendations of the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee that worked on that reuse study, and the city and the state. Uh, just at a big picture level, this is a pretty ideal site for a solar project in terms of uh, minimal abutters. We have the plant to the north, Connecticut River to the east, uh, Route 5 and the rail to the west. To the south are undeveloped residentially zoned pro uh, parcels. Uh, the project is a 5.4 megawatt ground mounted solar project. Uh, there are a variety of environmental issues on the site uh, by virtue of it being on the Connecticut River that really uh, drove the design of the project. The, um, and this is where I'll get into a little bit about some of the other approvals that we've received. Uh, the eastern swath of the site is state listed rare species habitat. Uh, we are working in rare species habitat and have received approval from uh, the Natural Heritage Program for that work. The entire site, uh, our entire work area is in the 100-year floodplain, which also makes it uh, in bordering land subject to flooding, which is regulated by the Conservation Commission. We also have a portion of work in the riverfront area. Uh, the project has already received its order of conditions uh, for the work in regulated resource areas from the Commission. Uh, the project is subject to site plan review from the Planning Board. Uh, pursuant to the city's solar uh, ordinance, and we have received site plan review approval from the planning board. Uh, lastly, the project uh, required a stormwater permit, which has also been issued. Um, in terms of just logistics about the project, uh, the project will be owned by Mount Tom Solar LLC, which is a, a, an affiliated subsidiary of NG. Uh, they'll hire a contractor to build the project, but they will own it. Uh, there is an executed interconnection agreement with Holyoke Gas and Electric, uh, who will take the power from the project. Uh, access to the facility will be through the main plant entrance. Um, in terms of 
vegetation clearing. There's no vegetation clearing proposed on the east side of the project, just given sensitive environmental issues with the riverfront and rare species. There is a portion of the site in the middle, which is, we refer to it as the vegetated drumlin. There's a, a slight mounded area in the middle of the site which has uh, vegetation on it. That will be cleared as part of the project. Uh, the entire project will be fenced. Um, and there is a pretty detailed operations and maintenance plan that is in your application, uh, which has been vetted with the Conservation Commission and other uh, regulatory bodies. Our um, application in front, of the, uh, in front of the City Council, it's our Joint Site Plan Review Special Permit application. So it lists uh, criteria with the special permit criteria specific to floodplain. And I'll let Brian talk about those in a little bit more detail. Is that mic really on? Check, check it out. You're talking, but it's, I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was on. It could get, so now, yeah. now I think it's on. Okay, talk. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. Maybe it's just the way it didn't sound like it was totally on. I can hear you because you're right in front of us. Yeah. 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 I, I got some pretty good notes, so uh, go go ahead, sir. All right. So um, I I can if you would like. Yeah, it's now definitely it's on. on now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can go through each of the criteria line by line. That's also in your application, or I can give you a general overview. I guess I would I would look to your preference on that. Why don't you tell me where, where in the application is the correct? So what, what do I have here? I, I have two. I have one. So Councilman Gibbons studying. So studying you have a fully bound application, and okay. what you have in front of you is our uh, since the original submittal to the City Council in March, right. our plans changed slightly based on input from. The Conservation Commission DP site plan. So you have updated plans in front of you, but I will show you in the bound document. If I can. Uh, compliance with zoning bylaws. So this is general solar site plan review. So starting on page four or five are where we go through the specific criteria that are in section eight of the zoning bylaw and address how. The Okay, so, all right, so I have. Oh, no, I'm lying. I'm sorry. It's in section five. We have a whole section devoted to it. Section five? Do you yeah. have a book? Do you have a book? Uh, there are only three books here uh, right. provided. I, I have my original Mount Tom okay. study, but that, that's okay. I'm, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I'm not going to be able to. You take this one and look at it. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I actually have with me the. Um, the special permit procedures from uh, Section 8 of the uh, Floodplain Overlay District. So, uh, Brian, why don't you kind of um, There's more in there that isn't Sure. Um, and, I, yeah, why, why don't you, or either one of you, why don't you sort of walk us through, I mean, you don't have to get into excruciating detail, but um, uh, there, there are there are certain certain um, criteria that have to be sort of ad adhered yep. to. So why don't we, you know, why don't you yeah, sort of let tell me, us let me what, start running at. through those, and I yeah. and I'll try to just hit the highlights in each one. Great, recognizing that there's detail in the application. So, uh, first item: the use is designated in a manner consistent with the need to prevent flood damage to the existing property, neighboring properties, and the general public. Uh, the way that was managed on this site is. Um, we've provided compensatory flood storage on the site, so essentially any fill that's being done on the site at one foot incremental elevations, we're also providing a cut on the site at that same elevation. So at the end of the day, uh, this site will actually hold as much or more flood water at each elevation as it does right now. That was part of the, the design of the project. That was part of the, one of the performance standards of the Conservation Commission as uh, permit through bordering land subject to flooding as well. Um, item number two, very similar to item number one, granting the special permit will not result in increased flood heights, additional threat to public safety, water pollution, erosion, and sedimentation, or cause a nuisance. So addressing those, you know, essentially line by line, the flood storage, I already talked about how the site is, is in compliance with uh, compensatory flood storage for each point of fill on the, height, on the site. Um, 
As far as erosion and sedimentation or water pollution go, the site is currently uh, tilled row crops and the intention of the project is to convert the open soils or the row crop soils to essentially a, a grassland mix that's going to be on the site. So it will inherently by design of the project, the potential for erosion or, or water pollution will actually be reduced. Um, as far as threats to public safety go, the site will be fenced and the electrical components on the project will be designed and constructed in accordance with the National Electric Code. So just, on the, uh, just on the fence, so how high is the fence going to be? I believe... You can look at our detail. You can answer that. I believe it's seven feet, and then it has a six-inch gap under it for wildlife passage. Okay. And... Um, Six feet. Okay, so so one of the things that really angered, and I mean angered, people uh, in West Holyoke is a gosh awful looking solar field surrounded by a really homely fence and even homelier arborvitaes that, that are about three feet tall. Really looks horrible. So what are we going to do about that? I don't, uh, it will be virtually impossible for people to see this So motorists driving on Route 5, facility. Is, it's heavily trafficked. You, there's, you're saying that you're, they're not going to be able there's to see There's a the fence. pretty wide swath here. This is um, almost, you know, starting at 30 to almost 100 feet of vegetation on the west side that's not going to be cleared. So this, between the uh, Route 5 and the rail and the fence line, this all this vegetation is going to remain. Okay, because I'm of the opinion that um, I'll believe it when I see it. Um, and so for other vendors that have come in here, they've offered to provide a bond that should the um, and uh, you know a, a significant bond, uh, you know twenty twenty five thousand dollar bond. Uh, which I'm going to make a motion that this vendor is going to do the exact same thing because we we be required for other people, and that bond will be held by the HG&E, and it'll be for a three-year period, and it'll be uh, used if we have to re require any plantings to to cover up your 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 fence that you say we can't see but in the winter time when I'm driving along there and I see a stupid solar field with a horrible looking fence over what I mean listen it's not gonna be worse than a Mount Tom coal plant that I've been looking at for 50 years but 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 um but I I just I really think you ought to be cognizant of that I mean take a ride out on uh, Old County Road yeah we I'm worked sure you, on that project okay We're, yeah it's, we know exactly what it's, you're talking it's, it's about it's atrocious <laughs> So, um, and, and it's, it's shameful. And, and, and how the vendor doesn't even step up and, and fix it now is beyond my understanding. But it's, it's really, really a, a sore thumb for the community out there. I don't even represent the part of the community out there, but it's, uh, I've heard it myself, so. Yep, I, and we've seen it. And, okay. I, I, and, and that's certainly um, so I, I, something that can be conditioned. I do, uh, the, the uh, restrictions against clearing on this site were so strict that we're doing as little as possible so they're Great. really there uh, there's such a large swath of existing vegetation along here that uh plantings would be moot but a a condition that if there are visual impacts that well i, I don't know if they're, they're going to be okay with that but i'm, I'm going to motion for that i'm going to motion them. for that condition <clears throat> so so you can think about it if you want or whatever but anyhow proceed okay thank you Could I? Councilman Brian, could you, just a quick question. And, and talking about the, um, uh, the Wetlands Protection Act, the one-foot increments, can you sort of explain that a little bit? Um, Instead so, of flooding. Sure. So it's essentially, the the existing topography on a site. And let me go back to the grading plan here. So the the bordering land subject to flooding is coincident with the hundred-year floodplain. That's the resource area that's regulated by the commission. The performance standard for that that's in the Wetlands Protection Act and the Holyoke Wetlands Ordinance re requires that for every uh, f cubic foot of fill, you cut one as well. So that's, that's the intro. 
Right. So basically, the way this the site is laid out, we have elevations on existing elevations on the site all the way from approximately elevation 114 up to elevation um, in this Drumlin area. We're at elevation 122. Uh, floodplain elevation, the 100-year floodplain, is defined as elevation 121 or 120. No, that's the 10-year. Um, 121 on this site. So what we've done is we've essentially looked at the um, available stu flood storage capacity above every single one of those incremental elevations. So we did, um, it, it was a, a CAD analysis where we took the entire site and then we looked at elevation 114 and we calculated all of the volume above elevation 114 but below elevation 121. That's what the available flood storage was. And then we did the same analysis for ev elevation 115. So between 115 and 121. And then 116 and 121. And we did that for the existing topography on the site. And then we showed the grading on the site that had to happen. And then we added in allowances for all of the equipment, the, the racking, uh, the arrays, the panels. All of that was also added in. And then we did that same analysis in proposed conditions for the exact same ele elevations. So in every instance, the available flood storage above each one foot incremental elevation is greater after the project is installed than the, it, the site uh, has currently. Uh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I, I'm just, yeah, because it's basically you're making it a little bit better than what it, was, it is right now. That's exactly right. right. Flood wise. Yeah. Right. So item three, other lands in a district will not be adversely affected by the proposed development through the increased height or velocity of future floods and the supporting infrastructure will be sufficient to accommodate the use during and after a flood event without endangering other properties. A lot of that is based on flood storage, goes back to the same comments that we had, the way the site was designed, there won't be an impact from flood storage. And then looking at the topography of the site, the site is essentially bounded to you know, the, the upriver portion by areas that are out of floodplain. So when there is a flood situation on the site, the flood, the flood elevation will rise from the river into the site, and then it will drain back out to the river. So, you know, in addressing issues to other properties, it's not as if this is in the river channel itself, so it isn't, there isn't going to be a velocity issue from an, an incoming flood water. The flood waters on the site will come from the river and then go back out to the river. So that alleviates any concerns to neighboring properties from the flooding. Any questions on that before I move on? Um, all public utilities, facilities such as sewer, gas, electric, water systems are located and constructed to minimize or eliminate flood damage and infiltration of flood waters into the system, um, containment of sewage, safety of gas, electric fuel, and other utilities from breaking, leaking, short circuiting, grounding, igniting, electrocuting, or any other dangers due to flooding are adequately protected. So another of the components and one of the reasons why there's so much compensatory flood storage on the site is by design, we have included all of the equipment pads, which there are four of them here along the western edge of the project. Those are all graded and elevated above floodplain. So the transformers, the inverters, the switch gear, the interconnection equipment is all located above elevation 121. So it's completely out of floodplain. So from a, a hazard issue, all of, all of those components are outside of floodplain above flood elevations. Within the array itself, anywhere that we have wiring coming from the panels, they're going through NEMA 6R boxes, which are um, not only watertight, but they're you know, pressure resistant watertight boxes. So all of the connections that are happening, all of the electrical connections are inside enclosed boxes that are, that are watertight, that are flood tight. Um, prior to entering the conduits into each one of the equipment pads, we're going through uh, a watertight, a liquid tight nipple is what it's called, and then into a separate enclosure. So if by chance there is some water that does get into a conduit, there's a break between where those conduits terminate and the equipment. So there's no way for water to follow its way up <coughs> the conduits and into the pieces of, um, you know, both inverters and transformers that are above floodplain. 
Um, you know, an another thing that I that I kind of glossed over is there there are no um, water, sewer, um, or gas utilities for the project, so those aren't aren't required on the, you know, to be compliant here. Um, item five: the proposed use complies in all respects to the requirements of the underlying district in which the land is located, and you know, as Brian indicated, solar facilities are allowed as of right. Um, and parcels with uh, parcels of land within any zoning district. Um, we've been through both Planning Board, Conservation Commission, and Stormwater Commission to get the approvals for the project. These parcels, I didn't mention that. These parcels are both, uh, the parcel's industrially zoned, so the recent zoning change uh, that the committee is familiar with uh, doesn't apply for it, so it's still as of right. Okay, sorry. And then item six, proposed use demonstrates evidence of compliance with all applicable local, state, and federal laws, including erosion and sediment control ordinance, the Holyoke Stormwater Ordinance, Massachusetts Building Clo Code, and the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. And I believe, you know, we've, we've kind of outlined how we are in compliance, in compliance with all of those other local requirements, and the project is subject to a building permit with uh, the building commission here in Holyoke, as well as an electrical permit through the building department as well. And the, the project, you know, is, is required to be designed and constructed in accordance with National Electric Code. There's also a requirement of uh, Section 8 that requires the drawings to be stamped by a professional engineer certifying that uh, the project has been designed in compliance with the uh, floodplain provisions of the Mass Building Code, and there's a note on our drawings, uh, and our drawings are stamped that meets that requirement. What else is in here? The, the rest of section five is uh, a discussion of compliance with general special permit criteria, uh, not specific to section eight. We can certainly go through uh, those if the committee wishes. Uh, well, why don't you hold on a second. So does anybody have any questions at this point? Uh, oh, we're joined by Councilor Graney as well. Um, Councilor Sullivan. Yeah, um, so in this uh, section five, it's uh, uh, number two here, the social, economic, or community needs. Uh, for uh, right here, the project will generate property tax revenue for the city of Hoyoke. Now, this is also, uh, has a pilot. Uh, you will hear about that on Tuesday, the 21st. There will be a pilot. Uh, payment in lieu of taxes agreement for this project. Yeah, I, I, I had a file. I filed an order on behalf of the Economic Development Office for, for a pilot, so they'll, they'll have to be back for, for a pilot. Okay. And that's not part of the special permit criteria? That's here, not right? part of this, no. Okay. Councilor McGivern? Thank you, Councilor Bartley, and thank you for the presentation. Um, <clears throat> the zoning is all commercial, where the project will be. It's, uh, in, it's industrial, and it's actually uh, two separate zoning districts. Part of it is industrial, and part of it is industrial park. But it's not, there's no residential zoning on the site. Okay. And the, the R, at the beginning, someone mentioned RA, is that? There's a, there are residentially zoned parcels to the south of the site. Oh, but the. The solar project's not going Yeah, so, so not off, off the project site. And the implication for that under the site plan review ordinance is that we have a larger setback to the res okay. residentially owned so parcels. The right to put the solar panels there is a gimme. All we're dealing with is the floodplain. And actually, all we're dealing with is giving you permission to work in the floodplain. Correct. You need to listen to the building department, the conservation, the stormwater, and the, and the state on following all the criteria. I wouldn't have one technical question I could ask you because I'm not an engineer. No offense, I'm not an attorney. I've been a city councilor for a long time, and if you listen to everybody and do it by the book, I don't see why we can't give you permission to do it. Is there protection for the residential homes downstream? Does this add any greater danger if that big flood comes to their property? No, absolutely not. In fact, I would argue that uh, the site will be better protecting of 
any downstream properties than it currently is right now. Okay. Can you give us just, so if we were asked that question, can you give us the layman's version um, of how that? The, from, from an erosion point of view, if the site floods after the project has been constructed, the site will be essentially a grass vegetation, which provides a much tighter surface and much less chance of erosion than the row crop um, that's, that has existed on, on the site for, I don't know, probably my lifetime, certainly decades, um, as well as the fact that from a flood storage point of view, when this project goes in, there's actually additional flood capacity and you know it's marginal it's not significant but there is additional flood capacity after the project is done than the site contains right now okay so the, the, there should be no impacts to any abutting properties or any properties downstream or you know anywhere in the Connecticut River from that point of view no more of impacts project. than what they can expect now from a hundred year flood and actually there's a little bit of improvement for protection correct thank you mr. chairman Thank you, Councilman Gibbon. Yeah, it's, it's true. We're all, all we're really doing is making a determine that, uh, that the solar array isn't in conflict with the floodplain overlay district. So that's, that's all we can, and, and frankly, you know, not, you know, attorney or not, uh, that, that's certainly not my <laughs> sphere. I can tell you that. So, um, but it's, it's good to, you know, frankly, it's, it's I got to be honest, a lot of the things I like about being a city councilor is that I learn a lot more than, uh, I, I learn something all the time in, in here, so this is actually helpful to, to me. So, um, I think you, a lot of the technical issues that are outlined in Section 8 are also uh, wetlands issues. So I think by virtue of the project already having an order of conditions, a lot of, uh, I don't know if that brings you, the committee any comfort, but a lot of, uh, you know, the, the project was scrutinized pretty heavily by the Department of Environmental Protection, just given its location on the river and rare species. and the site, frankly, um, and you know your conservation commission, they scrutinized it a lot, so. Yeah, they, they did. In fact, I, I, I see that they're meeting right now. They are. The, they closed the hearing and voted to issue the order of conditions, and tonight they're just final. They, that was two weeks, over two weeks ago at this point. Now they're just issuing the order. Okay. We thought we'd come here instead. Okay, great. Um, Council Tallman. I just had a question, um, and I, it's, I know it's already probably been vetted through with the conservation and the endangered species area, because it's, you're boarding it, right? We're, we're, no, we're working in it, but we are only working in the portion that is already cleared for the agricultural field. So the species that are of concern to the state are uh, in the trees and then in the vegetated areas up to the north. So we have their, uh, formal sign off that okay. the project doesn't require a permit from them and the conservation commission needed that before they could close their hearing and that was for the uh was that the state that's this yeah the natural heritage natural heritage yep. okay they they have to give the conservation commission sign off before concom can close okay and they you didn't have to do anything special or anything or move anything or make any channels or we, anything the of course uh the applicant wanted the biggest project possible we the concession is we're not clearing anything uh, close to the river, but the fact that the the fact that the site has been in active agricultural use and a large portion of it is already cleared made this um, you know easier to permit than had it been you know completely vegetated along the river that would have been impossible. Right, and you said this, the site of south of that is residential. But yeah. it's unlikely that anybody has ever built or would ever build there. Oh uh, no, I don't. I don't think that. I, you know, there are these long, these three long lots that are residentially zoned. They they could be developed at any time. But the uh, the site plan review requirements for solar, where you abut residentially zoned parcels, uh, we have to have a hundred uh, foot setback, which is and it's um, it's much smaller when you abut other uh, zoning districts. So there's a large swath of vegetation that isn't going to be cleared between the limit of work and these parcels. And, and that's enough of a buffer in case someone does build there? It's like 60 I mean this, feet at spots, yeah. And the trees, it, whatever's there, trees or bushes or whatever? There, it's barely, there are photos in our application. It, it, there are, it's very vegetated, okay. big tall trees, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, and you said there was a, it was being actively farmed? Yep. Wow. I, I, I don't know if, do you know who farmed it? You guys had a lease with someone. 
corn. Oh, well. Yeah. I never, we've never known that. And the legend is, says cranberry bog, but I think that's just <laughs> not for this particular one, right? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been nice. <laughs> that would. Yeah. We had we had a corn farmer, a squash farmer out there. That's wow. who knew. Who knew? Because you can't see it. Right, right. But I'm going to be looking now. Um, I, I'm going to be I'm going to be looking now. That's for that's for darn sure. Um, okay. Well, we are. Well, I thank you. Was there anything else you wanted to add in in closing? No. We uh, you know we we submitted our application in March. We're hopeful we can get on on Tuesday. This project has a tight schedule related to uh, state incentives for the project. So given that uh, we have all other permits in hand, we're hopeful that the committee can recommend uh, push us forward to the full city council on Tuesday. Okay, and we are in a public hearing. Um, would any members of the public want to speak for or, we are joined by Councilor Lopez, by the way. Uh, well, any any uh, members of the public uh, want to speak for or against? Uh, I don't hear or see anyone at this point. Any other councilors want to add another comment? No councilors want to add other comments. Um, I guess we would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. A motion to close the public hearing. Second. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, public hearing is closed. Thank you. So we'll just have a quick discussion here, uh, uh, Briny and Brian and uh, Mike and Bob. Bob. Sorry. Boy. <laughs> I, I'm usually very good with names, but sometimes I... <laughs> What about Bob exactly? <laughs> Poor Bob. Well, Bob's all right. Okay. Um, the chairman, if I could, um, for the purpose of discussion, I would just make a motion that we adopt the special permit with the conditions that we abide by all local city, state, federal requirements, statutes, and laws. Um, Ty and Bond is a Hoyle company who we recognize. I used to play in Mr. Sheridan's uh, attic when he had a great uh, model railroad air um, train uh, set up. Uh, we, we also know that the uh, local people still work at Mount Time and storm water can be examined by the great Jimmy Mokler if you need him to do it. And, and I think this is a, 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 a proposed uh, um, uh, development that certainly replaces something that we are going to miss in terms of tax revenue, but certainly fits to, into the scheme of what the, uh, the advisory committee looked at in the area in terms of reuse of this property. I would make that motion uh, if anybody. Um, yeah, and I, I, will, I would like to second it, but I, I wanted to just, uh, we've had Joe under an ordinance committee sometimes put a condition, we've done it for other applicants, but a condition right. to, <coughs> to, screen, to screen the, to, to the extent possible. So we, we've, yeah. we've, had, we've imposed that uh, vendors uh, acquire a bond to be held by Holyoke Gas and Electric and, and the bond would be for, um, you know, three to five years, just just so you know, folks have a chance to you know make sure that that screening, as as suggested by Briney, um, really does block out um, any visual impacts. So, what's your what's your pleasure on that, gentlemen? Is that is that a problem? Could, well, um, I, I, could you do I, us a I, favor and, and use the mic so everybody hears what you're saying? Everybody is yeah, Bob, in the I, audience. Yeah, Bob, I guess like, he, he, questioned the, he questioned the applicability of it, and you're probably right, but I, I don't know exactly what other time we're going to have a chance to well, well, it's a special permit, so in my understanding is we can put a condition on a special permit that we choose, um, so long as it's reasonable applicable. Now, in the presentation, we talked about fencing and we talked about screening. So I'm suggesting that a bond in this forum would be applicable. But if you want to counter that argument, I'll, I'm willing to hear it. Yeah, the, the fencing is only for a security measure. It's not required of the solar field. So for security reasons, we want to be protective of our investment. Uh, as far as the applicability for additional plantings in the floodplain, I, I don't see the connection between approval of the solar field and a floodplain issue with all the permits that we've achieved uh, and had approved to date with having an additional requirement to put up arborvitaes or trees, et cetera, along the, the roadway. If, if, that, that, that's, that's, why, that, that's why you have a bond. So it's not as if the bond's going to be 
um, tapped. Yeah. But but what measures? You know, give me another form which which I could which should <coughs> I could suggest that would it be at the when you come in for a pilot in ordinance committee? Would you rather me suggest it then? I mean, I'm going to suggest it at some point, Bob. So so you want to do it now? Or you want to do it? You want me to do it later? I I don't care. I'm just questioning the applicability. I, I understand you can suggest it and people can either vote or, or, or deny it. But I'm just wondering why it even needs to be suggested in the first place. That's what I'm questioning. Well, as I re reference the, the, the solar array in <coughs> West Holyoke on County Road, um, I, I suggested that is a is aesthetically displeasing uh, solar array. So it would have been nice had the vendor at the time put better plantings around there so, so neighbors across the street, now granted they live in Southampton, but they're still our neighbors and they have to look at that array. I wouldn't want to look at it and I bet your house where you live, I bet you don't look at a solar array. I'm, I'm gonna bet you a dollar you don't look at a solar array right now. I know I don't want to look at it. The area then that is we're talking about, there's no residents in the visual yeah, I realize there are no residents, but there's a lot of traffic that drives through Holyoke, and, and there's a heavily trafficked road. And I, and, I, and I heard Briny, and it's probably true that you, you wouldn't even need you wouldn't even need it. Um, you, you wouldn't we wouldn't even need to a, uh, exercise a bond. But you know, w what other protection do we have? Well, if, just, if if what she said doesn't come out, it doesn't play out exactly. Well, we do have the existing vegetation along the West Bank that is fairly large and fairly dense for even winter conditions. No, I heard that. But you know, proofs in the pudding. So I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, I guess. So, well, okay. Well, I, I appreciate that. I'm, and I don't know what they what they think. It's just my my suggestion. And if if I don't carry it here, I'll yeah. I'll suggest it. Well, orders, the other but. consideration is an added cost to the project, and it it has to be weighed into the overall investment of the project. Chair, I make a yeah. motion to reconsider our vote on closing the public hearing. Second. Second. <clears throat> all, all favor, reconsider action. Aye. 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 Okay, so now we're open. Thank you, Council Lopez. The veteran you are. You say. Just the issue, right, you know, right. Kidding. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I could, you know, sure. applicability, I understand. I, I'm not, I, I question the scope. Um, and the scoping is because of the nature of this permit. It, it isn't. It doesn't require the fence. You know this. This permit. You know the project is required to have the fence. This permit just allows, is is allowing, the petitioner to work in the floodplain. Um, but the work in the floodplain could have an impact on the vegetation that exists. So I think what Councilor Bartley is saying, we're looking for some assurance. That when all is said and done, after you work in the floodplain, that vegetation, that buffer is still there. Does that sound unreasonable? No, oh, we're not going to. Sorry, thanks. We're not even going to be near that existing layer of vegetation. You're a reputable on. company, a reputable engineering firm. The history recently with these projects is not good, and we've even had problems with our own gas and electric down in another <coughs> neighborhood down in Springdale. Mm -hmm. They'll mm -hmm. correct it, we know that. Or else well, the, Mr. Bartley will sicky on him. But we we just looking for some assurance. Is there you have a better suggestion or I believe the prints show that the area to be the areas that are gonna be worked upon are clear and the areas along the riverfront, the two hundred foot buffer zone, as well as west of the boundary of the solar field is not to be worked upon because if, if that is cut down and they go in there rather on purpose as part of the project installation that's a cost to us and that's not part of the budget of the overall project what assurance can we provide to the city other than what we have in the drawings I, we can add some sort of language that would prohibit any type of work and if such work was to happen we would have to reestablish that those plantings. Well, 
well, I mean, I'll make that a condition then, then, then to, to the special permit. So if, if your work, if the work done um, lessens the visual screening or in any way eliminates the visual screening, or if there's no visual screening, um, then your company, NG, will, will take corrective action. Is that, is that fair? That's very fair. I don't even know what I just said, but hopefully it's all on tape and, uh, and we can... Uh, and we can, you just uh, made a good compromise, Councilor Brown. And, and we can uh, memorialize that, okay? Very good. All right, so we'll, we'll, take, a, we'll take another motion, I guess, to close the public motion, hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, under discussion, gentlemen, on the, on the special permit, I think we have a... Uh, um, Councilor McGivin, you still want to just renew Make your a motion? motion to adopt a special permit providing that all city, state, local, federal laws, requirements, licensing permits are met and with the condition that if the existing vegetation and, and the site buffer, site view, site view. of the uh, west side of the property, is that correct? West. west side of the property is changed in any way, that corrective action will be taken by the petitioner. On west and south side, Councilor, and I only say west that south. because, I only say that because of the um, the potential, the potential, potential uh, of a the west and south side, okay. So east side would be the the river, and that's right. that's North Ward Eight there. over there. So we don't, whatever. Uh, that's their problem. That's our friends in Ward Eight. That's our friends. Yeah. That's you, you friend. <laughs> and then to the north, what is there? The plant. The plant. Power plant. Yeah, empty. Nothing's there. Okay. So that all. Um, All vegetation, um, all screening um, to the west and south remains intact, but if it does not, then NG or Mount Tom LLC will take corrective action upon notice within a reasonable time. Okay? Okay? Sounds good. Okay, on the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, none. Uh, okay, we're gonna recommend that the special permit be passed by the full city council at a meeting of the city council on Tuesday the 21st. Um, there's no really, I don't really think there's a need for you to attend the meeting, but you're welcome to as a public meeting. And we'll proceed from there. Just if I may, as a point of a privilege on discussion for the committee, um, we're not gonna meet in July, I'll tell you that. Um, but uh, Councilor Sullivan has brought to my attention a couple of important orders that are in the jacket. Um, so I'd, I'd like to, you don't need, need your calendars now, but I'd like to have us think about a time sometime in August. It doesn't conflict with any vacation schedules and I know it's a tough time too but um, you know you're looking at a meeting at, a, at about this length uh, within an hour um, uh, so so some point hopefully this committee will reconvene in August and then we'll uh, we'll proceed from there is that okay Council Sullivan uh, there's no chance we could squeeze it in before the uh, on the 21st before the council meeting or well I don't see it what you mean right before we meet on the 21st? Yeah, just like we're, we're doing tonight and we did Monday night. Uh, uh, so it's sort of known, it's not. Oh, we got Monday night, right? Nice. Well, he means right before the meeting, like 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 oh, like, 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 like like you used to do in the old days. We usually don't do that, right? Um, well, I don't know. Well, what it matters? It's, it's, it's up to you. I mean, I'm fine with it. Uh, yeah. It's, it's it, a two, it, uh, yeah, I think we put a sort of one item, you know, if we just did one item or two items, right? Two item agenda. Um, yeah, Mike, I, I don't, I, I just, I know my, my calendar that day well, what is are tough. The items, though? I mean, are they? They're, they're surplus properties. Prop, properties that declare surplus. It's in particular uh, 160, um, 160 Water Street. The fire departments, I think, and the police department have responded uh, probably half a dozen times just in the last week. Uh, well, I mean, 
so you got to get the thing out tomorrow. Then you have the meeting Monday or Tuesday, right? Well, Ryan would have to. So many days. Yeah, it would have to be out tomorrow. I mean, I'll. I mean, I guess it may, maybe if we set up for six thirty, it could probably be a pretty fast meeting. I, I mean, myself, I, I I can never tell. I'm still new at this, but it seems these ones uh, we should be able to deal with pretty quick. The, the motion is just to make them surplus. Well, to, to, to declare them surplus. There's, there's no. Well. It just, it just allows the mayor to negotiate. Yeah. He still has to come back to us. So. I, I, still I has think, to come back to us, yeah. You know, I think the other one is to transfer to Oil Creek Development Authority to declare certain. Fine. Is, is it two separate? I, I don't recall it there, Mike. I really don't. So does it committee? What, I mean, I'll, I'll come here for a 630 meeting and we meet at 630 sharp. I'm fine. Yeah, Councilor fine. McGivern is okay. Councilor Tallman, can you make it? Yeah, I'm trying to beg my best to make it. Hopefully I can. Tuesday? Tu Monday? Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. Okay, so Ryan, if you would, um, we're, we're going to schedule a DGR hearing uh, re relative to uh, those two items that Councillor Sullivan wants to wants put on the agenda uh, for Tuesday, the 21st at 6:30. Ryan, if you could just you post know, that. We got to explain to everybody that Ryan is like the Wizard of Oz. He's behind uh, the curtain downstairs. They, 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 they all know Ryan. <laughs> no, but he's behind the curtain downstairs in the TV room. Ah, uh, he's yeah. a good guy. Okay, uh, motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you.